I, I think she put it best when she, sum- when she summed it up as, right now there seems to be an environmental shit show going on. And you, we have earth changes, which we're going to discuss in a bit. We have you know, perhaps weird space weather going on. We have things in leaking out of the earth like this methane. We have... May I, and it, that's that's not because let, let's be clear the methane's not leaking because the earth is like oh it's time to off gas no the methane is leaking because man put it there man now, we we keep doing things and they, they these people that run these huge companies it's like when BP dug the Macondo well out in the Gulf they never have a cleanup plan they never have a and what happens when the Crap hits the fan. What do we do? They, you ever notice that, Christina? They don't ever have a backup plan. I mean, you, you need to hire a good attorney. I mean, and I hate I hate attorneys, you know. But it, there's just some sometimes in life you need them, and you need them to advocate on your behalf when you find out that you're living in the middle of one of these places because you're never going to get the money out of your house. You're never going to be able to sell your house. It could even be condemned with you living in it. And, you know, I totally agree. And I've tried to put myself in, in the situation like the people in Westlake are in and now these people in Porter Ranch. Um, you know, imagine just waking up one day and like all of your neighbors are moving. And everybody's renting U-Hauls and they're loading everything they can into the U-Hauls and everybody's leaving at once. I mean, how horrendous to be just ripped up and moved from the place that you called home because that home isn't livable anymore. And you know, how long do you wait? Do you wait until your kid has a brain tumor before you take it seriously? We know what the synergistic effects are of radiation, of methane, of hydrogen sulfide, of, you know, lead in the water, of benzene in the water. You can't mix those things. They're bad enough by themselves. But when you bring even just two of those things together, like benzene and radiation, the uh, multiplier effect will make them tens, hundreds, thousands, or even millions of times worse when it comes to health. And it's worse if you're younger. If you're a child and your cells are still dividing, you're going to get hit harder with this. Adults can handle exposure to radiation better than children, but it still affects the adult, correct? It, because some, some people think that, well, I'm older, so the radiation won't affect me like it would a child. I've, I've actually heard that argument. That's not accurate, right? It's complicated. Like it, ha- it has a lot to do with their immune system and what their previous exposure has been in the past. And you, you can even go online and calculate what your exposure risk is, if, and you can approximate how many x-rays you've had over your lifetime or CAT scans. CAT scans are horrendous. Or how many times you've walked through a TSA scanner or if you've had radioactive dye injected into you because you needed a thallium stress test on your heart or you needed, you know, thyroid treatment or something. You need to have like a... Um, uh, something done with your your GI tract and you had to drink some kind of dye, all of those things put you at a higher risk factor if you had any of those kind of medical tests. Um, and then where you live and what your parents and grandparents were exposed to. So, I mean, as a general rule, yeah, kids are usually more affected. But if you're an adult with a, a very um, complicated medical history, you've had a back injury, you, you know, had a bad leg break, you've had a bunch of x-rays or image, you know, imaging that's been done, or especially if you had any of those dye tests done, you're at a much higher risk. And if you fly a lot or you've flown a lot in your lifetime, like as a child, I flew a lot back and forth to Europe right after bomb testing because my dad was working in Spain. So I had already a history of exposure as a child. And when Fukushima happened, my health got hit really hard where it had, I had been able to manage things until that time, and then it, things kind of got out of control. And I learned how all of this worked from following people who are health effects specialists when it comes to radiation. And luckily, I have one of those in my family. Radiation exposure is no joke. It, it's really not. And I've told you, I, I knew some. I knew a a nanoparticles worth of knowledge and information when it comes to radiation exposure and radiation in general. 
And over the past six, seven months, you have, I mean, you, you and I have had conversations about this over the years, but in the past six or seven months, my education on the subject, uh, has been mind blowing to say the least. And so I, I have to say thank you. And I know the listeners are appreciative of it because that's how come I'm able to do the broadcasts. I didn't even realize, and I knew radiation was cumulative, but after like picking your brain and then chatting with Loren for hours off air and even on air doing interviews and stuff with her, just <clears throat> the, the, the stuff that people don't know about radiation is amazing. The, the level of information that people don't know, everybody thinks it's safe. Everybody thinks it's okay. It's not. And there's multiple different types of radiation too. And on that note, I want to bring in our other good friend, Joe, really quick. I just want to say hi. And then I'm going to go back to Christina. Joe, hi. Welcome to the broadcast. Hey, buddy. I know you're, you're, you're hanging patiently. I'm going to throw it back to Christina so she can comment on what I just no, said. No, you go ahead. I'm going to have my uh, cup of America, uh, Americum. Because <laughs> I'm American you're and Ameri- I like radiation. America Man, coffee. Ann Coulter says it's good for me. So I'm just going to go and have my cup of that while you guys go ahead. Your cup of muddy America. Okay. Please. So, Christina, yes, your thoughts good. on what I just said? And then, Joe, I want you to talk about RF because you're a radio specialist. So that's another whole type of different radiation. But go ahead, Christina. I know it's very difficult for people that live in the, in these places to like take this seriously. You don't almost don't want to believe that it's happening, but you've got to look at what's happened in the past. These types of disasters, love canal, for instance, you know, and, and women and, and um, mothers and grandmothers, they know when kids aren't thriving, they know when something's wrong and you have to really trust your instincts. And, um, you know, and the people, there's lots of communities that are dealing with these types of situations right now. And and whether it's because um, companies have, have not, um, they don't have the accountability, they don't have to take responsibility, they're protected by the federal government, you know, they have sometimes caps on how much you can sue for or years that you can sue afterward. Like if a kid gets sick, you know, you have a, like a statute of limitations on things. Like you, you almost get like a, a law degree, you know, and, and on top of the PhD that you need to figure this stuff out. Or you look back at cases that have happened in the past and you see how the people resolved those cases. And it always involves attorneys suing in a class action. And I'm not trying to like blow people off when they email me and say, hey, you know, I live in Westlake. You know, should I move? Well, I get that all the time for people, and I'm like, you need to get in on a lawsuit. Whoever is handling the class action lawsuits, get in on it because you, if you don't need to move right now, you're probably going to have to in the future. You're probably not going to be able to sell your house ever with this going on. And if that fire ever hits that waste there, then we've got big, big, big problems for the entire eastern seaboard. There's people that are currently, like, I, I would assume buying houses in that area – as of today, and I, I asked Dawn this, and I talked when I talked to Kim, uh, the lady from Cold uh, Coldwater Creek. They both said to me that there's people buying houses in there that don't know that that's even contaminated or the, the ground. They it, it's it's going, it, dep- it's going to depend on their disclosure laws in their state or their city, and that can vary. I know, in like in Michigan, you have to declo- disclose those types of things to people buying the house because if you don't and they buy the house, then you're on the hook for whatever it takes to fix the problem that you failed to inform them about. But there's communities that are so old, the pipes are so old that there are no disclosure laws. It's called buyer beware. You buy it as is. You bring in your own experts or appraisers to look everything over and tell you, is there going to be a problem But with this property? But a lot of times they're not looking at the dump upwind. They're not looking at the landfill that that was put in 50 or 60 years ago. You know, they're not looking at the methane storage underground. They're not looking at the history of the meltdowns in the area. They're not looking at any of that. They're just telling you if your property is okay. And most of the time they're not using radiation monitors unless it's a place that's known for radon. Like Wisconsin, Minnesota, they have very high radon levels there. So that's something that has to be disclosed and measured before anybody buys a house. So it varies from state to state. But yeah, there's a potential that people are buying houses in Westlake, then they have no idea that this is going on in this neighborhood. And we we have a clip to play from when people who lived 
in Bayou Corn experienced something similar in the, in the recent past. In fact, it was 2013 that Erin Brockovich had to go to that city, and that was after I called her uh, her law her attorneys, the people that work for her. I said, Do you know anything about this? And I talked for hours with their experts about it. They sent her down there. She went on the news and she told everybody, basically, get out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that clip because you dropped me the link to it. I want to play this really quick. I want to get Joe's take on all this. So here we go. Air being told this is dangerous. Get out. The sinkhole in Bayou Corn bringing out heavy weights. Just what to do. There is absolutely risk and potential for explosion. From environmental activists to lawyers. Is all these chemicals now getting into the water supply? Is it getting into the bayou? Is it causing an environmental problem? It's a disaster, and it should have been dealt with seven months ago. Good evening. Erin Brockovich is joining the fight to help residents in Bayou Corn. She told them she has their backs and wants to take Texas brine to court as they continue struggling with daily life after that sinkhole formed. Now, it's a story you saw live at 6 o'clock on Just One Station. And News News' Olivia Laborde reports from Assumption Parish. Um, I've never been accused of talking too softly. Aaron Brockovich's voice booms through this tightly packed room. The crowd seems anxious, unsure, looking for answers, and hope the world's famous environmentalist can help. This is so awful. We don't know what to do. We don't know what's going on. A little exciting that we've got somebody that's interested in doing something about it. They're being told this is dangerous. Get out. And they need to get out. That land, those homes, it's useless now. They were forced out months ago under a mandatory evacuation order when a massive sinkhole was discovered just miles from their homes. Texas Brine is taking the blame and has been paying evacuees nearly $900 a week. They've got a situation and they're trying to tell the community clearly this is a mandatory evacuation. That means danger. It all started when mysterious bubbles appeared in Bayou Corn a little over seven months ago. Authorities say it was caused by methane gas and insist it isn't toxic. There's serious gas pressure there. There is absolutely risk and potential for explosion. And I don't want to take that risk. She became famous after Julia Roberts portrayed her in a film where Brockovich won nearly $300 million for residents and a California town who were exposed to tainted water. But folks around here say they're not impressed by all that. They're just hoping Brockovich can help them get what's rightfully theirs. You know, I mean, looking at a uh, hundred million now, whatever, that, you know, we're not like that. We wasn't raised like that or nothing, but, but they got to understand nobody gave it to us. You know, we paying for it. So it's pretty much to see how it goes again. Olivia Labor, WBRZ Bell. All right, so there you go. And Christina, you brought up a good point while the, the video was playing that it's this, the same thing she is concerned about. The explosion, the potential for an explosion is exactly what is going on over in California right now. Yeah, people can't turn their ovens on. Planes can't fly over. They can't work at night because they're worried about the machinery setting off this gas cloud. They got to get everybody out of there. 